Hello, my name is Sage, and today we're going to be doing a cloud guide. Uh, like my other two guides, these are not necessarily for more advanced players. However, they will help you get into the basics of the character, trying them out, and seeing if they're the right character choice for you. So, let's get right into it. So, starting off with Cloud, I'm going to be doing his normals first. Uh, his Japanese tilt. Jab is a pretty quick option. I can see it's a nice three hit jab. Um, it's mainly useful for when people are coming at you in this situation where you need to shield. Uh, Cloud does have better out of shield options, like I'll get into I'll get to it in the thing about like up smash and up B. And both of those do more damage or just outright kill. While those are benefits, the main benefit Jab has is not leaving you as vulnerable. Because when you up smash and miss, it leaves you you have a pretty considerable amount of end lag. <laughs> My apologies. No. And when you up B, if you miss, that gives them a lot of time to actually run behind you and grab you. So it's not really a game changer to jab, but it's pretty nice to jab. Especially versus faster characters like Fox or something, it's just a good option. Next we have F Tilt. F Tilt is pretty strong. Um, you can uh, reverse the momentum with thing, which is really nice because it's not hard to hit as a move in general. It's really good at uh, reacting to ledge options. I say as I don't react to the ledge options. But as you can see, the hitbox is pretty massive. So if they just like normal get up at like 130, they're probably dead. Yeah, there we go. Well, he's not dead. Uh, maybe not 130, but as you can see, Cloud doesn't really have any notable rage, so it's going to be different for you uh, when you're in an actual match. But generally, I would say it kills around 130. So that's nice. You can also do stuff like that to get more uh, damage off of it. Do you think you can angle it a bit? Could be mistaken. Actually, I don't know. But the hitbox is massive anyway, so you don't really need to. And being able to like reverse it after dash is really nice. Um, basically, the sequence of inputs you just um, if you have tilt stick. basically like hold back on the stick and do the tilt at the same time and it'll like cancel all your momentum uh now moving on to down tilt down tilt is mainly useful for chaining into up airs um outside of that it's not that good it's one of cloud's slower options like around frame 20 something sort of make it generally pretty bad to use as a general option in neutral that being said, you do uh, rebuff shift quite a bit with this. And if you can bait an opponent, um, just like pressing buttons, hitting them with a down tilt, hitting them with a down tilt into something like that is pretty nice. Um, the fair isn't true, but you can get stuff like Nair, which has such a big hitbox, hit uh, such a big hitbox. That it's pretty hard to get away from them. Uh, for them to get away from it. So yeah, down tilts, it's okay. It's not crazy, but it's there. It also hits the ledge. Um, but generally you don't want to do that. Uh, like I said, because it's like it. So next you have up tilt. Funnily enough, up tilt also chains into up air. Which is a really good combo. 
up tilt is generally more useful. It can reach uh, platforms. That was not true, but you can just see like with up tilt nair alone, you put your uh, opponent in a pretty awkward situation. And then you can follow them from there. And then, obviously, you can just do the basic chain. It's following them with up air. Either way, you're putting your opponent in a pretty bad spot, and the hitbox is also fairly generous. Um, actually, let me turn on the hitbox uh, visualization. I can do that. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, hitbox. Okay, so now you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. Yeah, pretty big hitbox. That's just cloud in general. Very, very big hitboxes, so you can imagine how good um, up to works for him. Yeah, just basic situations like that. Even if they're not, like, guaranteed to happen in an actual match. Uh, Cloud is just a simple enough character to where you can, like, adopt on the fly and think of things you want to do. Uh, your, your opponent reacts to them. Yeah, character fairly basic, but gives you a, a decent bit of freedom. Now, um, we're going to move on to the smash attacks. Up smash, uh, the bread and butter smash attack. It's fairly large. It has a sour spot and a sweet spot. Um, let me see if I want it. Yeah, it kills at around 115. Let me see if I can get it. To... But that is the sour spot. You'll notice it's still really good at killing despite it being a sour spot, but sometimes it just means like people are gonna live at like 110, even when they shouldn't. So just keep that in mind. Um, but it is a very powerful. It's a pretty powerful. I have shield option. Yeah, this is a neutral special, but see, get the baggy. Okay, that, but moving on. <laughs> moving on. We have. Moving on, we have F Smash. F Smash is pretty laggy. You mainly just want to do it because it's your strongest punish at the time. People can also fall out of the move with uh, certain DI. But generally, especially on Wi Fi, which is high mainly play, you can get away with using this a fair amount because it's kind of hard to react to. Um, especially since you don't really see this move come out all that often with Cloud. I know, like, sometimes you can, like, S smash and then bait him and do something like that, right? It shouldn't work, but it can work. So, yeah, that's something. Overall, it's a pretty decent smash attack. Like, if you can go for it, you'll go for it. It's just not something you want to, like, actively push for. Then we have Down Smash. Which is much like Ganon's Down Smash, except much weaker. That being said though, it's still a pretty good smash tag. As you can see, it like drags you from behind. This means, um... It's kind of hard to use it as a way to like edge guard, uh, edge trap or two frame someone. You mainly want to use it to punish someone uh, that's in front of you and mix up their DI to send them by. 
behind you. Also, pretty average smash attacks, definitely worse than up smash. And it kills later than the other two smash attacks. But it is there. Um, and combined with the mechanic I'll be talking about in a little bit, it's not it's not the end of the world if you have to use it. It's still a good option. You can see up here. Moving on to his aerials. Four damage. That's a good box. I'm moving to stuff like dash attack. A B. Side B. Although that was not a good example. To limit side B. Yeah, there we go. Massive hitbox is there. It's also just a really safe poking tool. So you can use it pretty uh, defensively as well. And it even has the added benefit of spiking. Because it, it clearly needs that. Here. Not good at the game. Hit it? Yeah, I, I didn't hit it. But yeah, it spikes, which is why it can combo into side B in the first place. But yeah, it's a really good aerial. Um, it's not your safest aerial. Back air is still safer. Uh, but it's still a pretty elite move. And speaking of back air, we have to talk about this behemoth of a move. It is huge, it is safe, space, it is like minus, minus three on shield, and that means it's only minus six when parried, which is insane, because both characters cannot punish that, I'll just be completely honest, especially since Cloud, this hitbox is huge, like, not a lot of characters can really deal with this, and combined with being able to limit cancel, you basically just jump cancel out of it, you limit and then jump. Like, uh, same as the Frog Shot. To get more momentum, and mix up with your movement. Yeah, this move is broken as shit. Um, it also just kills. At around... Well, it depends, because you're going to be using this move a lot, so... Sometimes it'll just take a while for it to kill, like... Where you generally a pretty good, a, a pretty good indicator that they should probably be back there. And sooner was limit. Mention it now, but basically, what getting into limit break does uh, before I get into the other moves, it basically gives you a speed buff. Yeah, I'm way more agile. It also gives you a I don't know if it's either a damage or a power buff, but they're basically the same thing, right? You're going to be doing more knockback. And you get access to four buff specials, which I'll go over in a second, but that's generally what I uh, wanted to get out of the way with Limit. So, yeah, these options that may not kill uh, without rage, with Limit, they can definitely kill. So that's nice. So moving on to his Nair. Nair, I've already explained, is a pretty disgusting move. You get a lot of follow-ups off of it. You can see Nair is like such a massive hitbox. Works really well when reversing it to anti-air. It's just really good, because they can't really do much versus it.
Yeah. They just get put in really nasty um, tech situations. And it's just really easy to juggle with this move. The only, like, benefit is that it doesn't kill, but even then, as you can see there, it puts them in a really bad spot, so... In a typical match, hitting a Nair... Like that usually means it's lights up for that stock. But yeah, it just opens a lot of gateways to... Further pressuring your opponent, which is nice. Now we have... Down Air. Which, most characters down Air is... Admittedly not that great, because they're too laggy. This is probably one of the best in the game. Not only is it a good move for two framing, and just think through the ledge to kill people with spike, it's also really strong, and it also has the added benefit of a weak hitbox that lingers for a while, allowing you to not necessarily follow off of it, but it gives you a lot of time to like react to what your opponent likes to do. And since it also lingers for a while, it lets you get out of disadvantage easily. Not easily. Easier. Oh god, I got a challenge notification. My bad. Um Yeah, uh, as I was saying, it lets you get out of disadvantage easier because it lingers for so long, and people are trying to juggle you. If you just land like this, all of a sudden, they can be in a pretty bad spot, or you can basically be a suicide bomber and go full, full fastball down air, and it is so insanely strong. That even without limit, you can mess up someone's combo and just kill them. And that's great. Oh yeah, I got the spike. So yeah, generally, Dare is pretty good. Um, there's not really any tips I have with this move. You just have to be a bit wary. You don't want to use it all the time when you're in disadvantage, because obviously people are going to catch on to that. But overall, it's a very solid move. And I just realized I forgot to talk about dash attack. Um, since I've already talked about the aerials, uh, besides up air, let's talk about dash attack. Dash attack. It combos off of most of his aerials, namely off of um, namely off of forward air and back air. It's also very strong, it's one of the strongest uh, dash attacks in the game. And it's really good at like baiting after uh like fading back after an aerial and then immediately doing dash attack. It's really good at messing with people's DI. Which makes it pretty powerful, especially with limit. Um another great thing about the move that you can two frame with it. bad at timing it at times. If I don't get it here, there we go. That, that might have not been a two frame, but you basically get the idea. I hit them, they die. Or they get sent at a really awkward angle upwards. And after that, you can kind of just kill them for it. Now, on to up air. Up air is probably... You probably think it's the most one from Smash 4 because well that in there because they don't like we need the match but as you can see up air still has a huge hitbox um not as huge to where you can hit it from everywhere but with the moves I had mentioned earlier being able to um combo into it it's a really broken juggle tool um here like that that down there was not a good option but you can see there realistically even if Mario if even if Mario was a real person 
uh, because he doesn't have a soul. Even if he was a real person, it's really hard to get out of situations like that. And those are like basic hit, hit confirms for Cloud. Um, the higher first sense go, they're not as true, but it's still really hard to land versus Cloud, which is a pretty nice uh, perk to character. And now, um, I think I covered all his aerials and stuff. So now it's on to his specials. Starting with this first one, we have Blade Beam. Blade Beam, it's not too crazy. Until you realize how good it is on a character like this. Cloud really doesn't have much in the ways of answering donors. Outside of just like outframe nading them and having better range. But just in case he just like needed more. Blade Beam is really good at closing mid distance. Um, not necessarily even if Cloud actually wants to do something, it's just really nice because you're throwing out this really toxic, long-lasting projectile that honestly pisses the opponent off. Like, if we're being realistic, it's really annoying to have to deal with it over and over. It's not even like a bad thing, right? You can do it after an attack. As you can see, it's just really good at harassing the opponent. Like, they, they just do... They generally want to get in versus you doing Blade Beam over. Because it also puts you in a pretty beneficial state being able to charge Limit. But speaking of Limit... Either way. The Limit version... Is a fairly powerful multi-hit of the move. Um, I think you can actually combo into it, if you're crazy enough. Um, it's not nearly as easy to combo into it as, like, some, like, limit cross slash. Yeah. I think, see, that's, like, a basic idea of what you want to do to hit the permit. Um, it's generally not the strongest limit option, but it being multi-hit and getting faster, it's just really nice. Um... It's one of the more consistent multi-hit moves too. It does a lot of damage, so never really a bad option to just blade beam if you want to do that. It can be reflected though, so keep that in mind. Clubs not have a way to reflect it back, so you don't want that happening. With you. Moving on to side B, which you don't see it are basically just on B, which is I think is really cool. I mean, change Mario's percent. Like I mentioned earlier, combo this off of forward air and back air. Now, <coughs> there's actually a nice usage where you can down throw someone and then do it, but it's not true. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend relying on that. Uh, just relying on the aerial is good enough. Flash is really good because it does around 20 damage and it's pretty good as a uh... oh. It's pretty good as an anti-air like it, it, it has a surprisingly good hitbox to anti-air people and it just does a lot of damage And then if you Charge it up when the cross slash is one of the most like moves in the game and it's also really safe. Let's do that F here. Yeah, charging limit can be kind of a dodge, but it's worth noting. Yeah, as you can see, pretty 47%. You know, nothing too crazy. Um. One thing about side B is that if the opponent shields,
Okay. Hold on. I'm out, guys. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, you can see the frame advantage now, so that's nice. Yeah, you can see how disgusting the good back here is. Um... But yeah, my point was, if you cross slash on shield, it's pretty laggy. And even if you do it to like a, a, a length where they can possibly like have to respect it, they can roll during the move or parry the hits to punish you. So keep that in mind. It's not like a throw out and win button, even though it's still very good. Um, there is... A, a little bit of risk involved. You know, they, they had to make him like a DLC character, but again, but they, they just balanced him out a little bit. And then, we have Up B. Probably the move a lot of people hate um, for good reason. It's broken. Um, you can also this off of fair or back air. And as you can see, it's a suicide kill, assuming they don't have a jump. Um, you can also reverse it, which can make it... <laughs> Not like that. Yeah, with that, and the the lower the hitbox that comes down is the spike. As long as you don't hold down, you can basically use that to scare your opponents, because when you're coming down, it's like a giant spiking hitbox. And if they're, like, underneath you in any sort of way, or trying to get back to the stage, it's really scary. Um, it's also one of its best out-of-shield options. It's also one of his best out of shield options. They can punish a lot of moves in the game, but while it's still really good and it racks a good percent, I would heavily recommend, um, I heavily recommend just not spamming it because when people start closing the gap in skill to you, they're gonna just be able to hard call out a top player who just only upbeats. It's a it's a really good option, but it's also really laggy, so don't rely on it too much. And then finally, um, his cross, um, not cross slash, his limit version of Clint Hazard. It basically, just makes his recovery a lot better. Um, with his normal up B, he he has to go above the ledge before snapping, which is actually really exploitable for some characters. Uh, with the limit version of Clump Hazard, he doesn't have to do that, which is really nice. Um, another added benefit is that it just kills as well. Probably one of the more underrated options, because you can still use it as a defensive option out of shield, and it will just kill you around that percent, which is pretty nice. But generally, you want to use your limit on cross slash or just have the limit to buff your character attributes to pressure the opponent more. And then finally, we have down B. I mentioned earlier, you can jump cancel it, which already adds a lot of utility into the move. Let's see, mix and match your options select. And. Uh, when you chart it up, you get Finishing Touch, which is a pretty strong option, and you can even combo it off of up air to make it, like, even more deadly. Uh, the only problem is Finishing Touch is kind of dog shit. It has, like, a ton of end lag. Yeah, that didn't even kill. 
<laughs> it has a ton of end lag, and missing it just leaves you wide open, and you just generally don't want to use your limit on that, which means you should definitely do it every time you get the chance to, because it's funny. So, yeah. Going on, uh, that's all the specials. Next we'll do with grabs. His grabs are pretty straightforward. Um, he doesn't really have a combo throw, per se, but he doesn't really need it. Uh, one thing to note, his grab range is not the best. Uh, most of the Explorer characters have pretty, pretty grab range. But with Cloud's constant onslaught from the giant F aerials, it's honestly not that bad to get a grab. Especially at the ledge. F throw is just good to keep opponents in front of you. Down throw is kind of awkward because at higher percents. sends them away and upwards, which you can't really follow up after that, after that, especially if they're actually holding the controller. Up throw is kind of just a symbol kick upward, does good percent, and send them at a pretty decent angle, you're not going to get a follow up off of it, but you can follow their uh, momentum pretty easily. And then, that's not Back throw probably the most practical of these because sometimes you can dash tag after it and it is pretty deadly uh, not even necessarily because it will kill it's just really nice to have a long lasting hitbox be benefited by a throw and pummeling with him it's pretty nice as well uh, pummeling is kind of underrated in general but just having a, a little bit of extra percent to work with to get your kill moves going. Especially with limit, is really nice. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of any niche options I want to talk about before I move in move on to his weaknesses. I don't think I do, but I am going to see you in a bit. I'm going to uh, try to ben uh, try not to show his weaknesses a little bit so I can try to talk to it talk about it a little bit more in depth so we'll see them all right so we're back and this is like a perfect character to exploit cloud's main weakness cloud without a jump is pretty terrible off stage now min min is really good at uh, being broken and like eating all your jumps, but <laughs> one notable thing about Cloud is what I did mention earlier. A B is kind of a liability at times because he always has to go um, above the ledge. You can see right there. If he had limit clip hazard, that would not happen, but since he didn't, I just always guarantee I hit him with something. And most characters have an option like that versus cloud which means you need you when you're playing cloud you do need to be uh wary you don't want to let people just kill you for free uh because it's pretty easy to put cloud in those situations like a lot of people say matchups like say donkey kong are even because even though cloud theoretically like shits on the character dk has a pretty good advantage state and he can also just like put cloud in a situation off stage that is horrifying because he always has to go above the ledge without limit. Um, another thing about Cloud is that it's kind of hard for him to land. Uh, this one isn't really as notable. Like I mentioned earlier, he does have a few tools to get out of this tenant, but it is something worth noting. Just keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about with Cloud, actually. Um, yeah. So that was the Cloud Guide. If you guys enjoyed, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll definitely be doing more in the future. Um, I've kind of been, like, doing stuff, uh, other stuff in my free time besides content, uh, which is why it's been a long ass time since I've uploaded, but I do want to kind of get back into it a little bit more. Especially now that summer is coming up. I'll have a bit more time to do stuff. Which is nice. Um, 
Yeah. I know you guys see the mods. I'm going to be posting them in the description. Because I do like to credit people's work. This is, uh, specifically is a cloud mod of Sid from Final Fantasy VII. I really liked it, so I downloaded it. And the stage, it's, I think it's called, like, Final... Yeah. Uh, Wochen Reaction. Uh, yeah. That was... Uh, the stage is, like, Final Heaven. Something crazy. <laughs> it has, like, a power state. I would... Funny. But yeah, I will post the mods in the description, and if you guys enjoyed the guide, uh, let me know. I'll definitely do more of these for characters I'm um, more familiar with. I think the next one is either going to be Marth, Roy, or Mega Man. So that should be fun to do, because I definitely like playing all of those characters to an extent. Uh, Roy gives me high blood pressure, but yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.